Hi everybody, this is Ben from Ravensdale Publishing. We are experiencing a few technical issues, but we should have it resolved here in the next few minutes, and we'll be getting started at that point in time. Sorry for the delay, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment.
Alrighty, hi everybody. We are, I think, ready to go here. Um, we're gonna turn off the splash image, and we're gonna kind of see how everything goes. So, hello, hello, everybody. All right, and of course, <laughs> I'm trying to get things set up for an hour. My cat's been silent. The second the, cam the microphone goes on. All right. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. We are just trying this out. Uh, this is the first time doing a stream of this many people kind of sitting around a table. So apologies if some of the camera angles are a bit wonky. We will get those fixed for the next one, I promise. But in the meantime, we've got people here to discuss, uh, to introduce. <laughs> and cats. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to have you guys go around the table and introduce yourselves while I satisfy my cat. Perfect. Ha. Huh. You're okay. Whichever order you guys want to go in. Yeah. All right. I'm Andrew. Um, that's about it. I like playing board games. Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you want? Uh, <laughs> whatever you're willing really to show. You're that's a big it. magic player, right? Uh, yeah, I play a lot of magic, and so I'm excited to do the Ravnica Guide to... D &D. I don't know what exactly what it's called, but not a lot, not big in D and D. Very excited to get started, get that more nerd cred in that area. Nerd and, cred, yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, awesome, so. solid. Hi, I'm Sophia. Can hardly play cosplay. I'm a casual magic player. Um, I enjoy the guilds of Ravnica. Started playing with Scars and Mirrodin. Um, we love Sorry. doing home drafts. Good time. Uh, played a little bit of Pathfinder, and we'll see how this goes. I'm Samson. I play Magic. I play D and I play pretty much any game, and uh, I'm excited to be planeswalking for the first awesome. time. So it's gonna be fun. <laughs> okay, sweet. Whew. For a second there, Twitch said that we were offline, and I was hoping that we didn't drop right before we did all the introductions. 
because that would have been annoying. Um, but no, we're good. All right. So those of you who are tuned in, you may or may not know me. I'm Ben. Um, I am the Ravensdale Publishing guy, um, the other half of Ravensdale Publishing at least. I know, I'm just, see, so yes, Sarah's the other half. My cat wanted to remind me. Um, I'm going to be DMing. I'm a longtime Magic player. I've been playing since the 90s. Like, what is it, 96, 97 when it came out? I forget. Oh, I think it was like 93, 94. Was it that early? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I've been playing it for a little while. Um, I remember back in the days when Playgrats were, like, you'd have unlimited Playgrats in your deck as a normal standard thing. So, um, yeah. I'm a big D&D player as well. I've been playing D&D for even longer than Magic. And I'm finally able to kind of match the two up without having to homebrew absolutely everything about it. And that's kind of cool. So, yeah, that's us. Uh, this is Ollie, the cat that's in my lap. You're, you can't see him right now, but he is extremely pleased to be here. So, yeah, so you'll, you'll be hearing from him. You'll be hearing from him throughout the stream, I'm sure. Especially if I stop petting him for any length of time. Uh, so. <laughs> He's just like, yeah. Yep. Uh -oh. Happy cat. So, we are going to be playing in Ravnica and, like, the larger Magic the Gathering kind of setting. I really would like to not stick just to Ravnica. Um, the source book for that is great, mm -hmm. but there are some really cool Plane Shift source um, PDFs that I want to explore as well. So, that's kind of my plan for that. Um, no point in being a Planeswalker if you're not Planeswalking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Awesome. Glad the stream looks good. Thank you very much for checking on that for us. And uh, I don't think... I don't know that Dr. Evil style is my style of DMing, but at the very least, it's... Um, Marquis de Sade, maybe? Might be a better... Like, you know... I, worse or better? <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I take, feel like we're going to be punished. I take great <laughs> pleasure when my players end up going, Oh, God. <laughs> so I'm going to be aiming for that reaction, you know, somewhat frequently. Uh, but, as far as the campaign goes, I think it's probably best to talk about that a little bit. Um, I am, as far as D&D goes, I like to play games that are a little bit more, not like super serious in tone, like I don't, mm -hmm. I hate grimdark stuff, but I do like to be a little bit more focused on, you know, trying to get into the characters and stuff like that. Less slapstick, but that's me. Um, I don't know if any of you have play styles that you want to kind of like... All out now. Our current campaign is a bit of a disaster, but we're having fun with it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm good for whatever. Mm -hmm. I like getting into role playing. And okay. I love, I love uh, focused and to the point stuff, so I'm good with that. Okay. Um, obviously, some jokes will happen. Mm -hmm. um, I myself am terrible with puns. Uh, by terrible, I mean good at them. Well, not good at Perfect. them. I make them frequently. So just be prepared for that. Um, I promise not to try and cuss. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. De yeah. Mm -hmm. the, with the cat, it's definitely Doctor Evil style DMing. Um, maybe we should shave you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he likes that idea. Um, so, having said that, um, let's talk characters a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the first the first step in any campaign is getting some characters down. So. As I, I think all three of you know, I did the Planeswalker kind of homebrew class. Um, I know a couple of you expressed interest. Are you all thinking about playing that class? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah. go for it. Um, so in that case, I think we'll all start off as first level Planeswalkers. That's great. Um, as a result of you being Planeswalkers, you can come from any of the um, planes. So if you want to come from Zendikar grab the Zendikar guide. If you want to come from Amon Ket, grab the Amon Ket guide. Um, there are racial options in most of them, as well as some additional um, mm -hmm. just flavor and stuff like that. Personally, I'm a huge fan of Amon Ket. I think it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, but, um, you know, I'm just saying. Zendikar vampires or See, Innistrad vampires? I don't know that there's Zendikar mm. vampires in like as a playable race in Zendikar, but I know what? they're in Innistrad. That is blasphemy. I know. That was the one I was looking at. I don't know, they're Just, so pretty. There's ex yeah. Exelon vampires, right? I don't know which ones actually have rules for playing them. Ah, gotcha. So. Mm. Amonkhet has rules for playing 
minotaurs, nagas, which is freaking awesome if you ask that's me. That's pretty cool. And another race that's unique to Amonkhet. It's like the the oh. Anubis style, like Beautiful. jackal people that have oh. like twins or okay. whatever. Okay. Um, Should have played more Amonkhet. I didn't. There are vampires in Zendikar. Oh, does it give you rules yes. for how to fight them? Okay. I'm checking out strong real quick too because. Well, let's find all the vampires. <laughs> I'm not sure. You might have a vampire in the game here, folks. <laughs> That'd be interesting. You can only activate. You can only act at night. Huh. Actually, I don't know how the, what the rules are for these kinds of vampires. Maybe they ignore that particular limitation. I mean, they're in the daytime in the artwork, but I don't know actually if that. I mean, there might be a, a trait specific to that plane. Yeah, the vampires in Ixalan were mostly white, so maybe they're all out in the sun. No, yeah, maybe. Although I guess they're called the Legion of Dusk. Hi. I apologize if I end up cutesy talking to my cat a lot. Um, yes. It's just a natural reflex whenever he looks but at me with those cute eyes, I mean, so um, apologies. Kaladesh is basically the modern version of, Zen of Mirrodin. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the druids. If you want to go somewhere familiar. You're on camera. Yeah. You're famous. He's gonna be more famous than any of us. <laughs> I know the, the internet. In the street. Put the cat back on. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I actually. So while well, they're kind of looking at character stuff, um, one thing that I'm gonna put out there is we are ultimately planning to. <laughs> Someone's recommending playing a Phyrexian planeswalker. I don't know that there are rules for Phyrexian PCs, and that's probably for the best. That is, I, I know who suggested that. <laughs> Um, Which plane's under the biggest threat of Phyrexia? The ultimate so, plan for these okay. ga this game is that we want to, it to have a fair amount of audience participation. Mm -hmm. So there will be times during the adventure where I will turn to the camera and we will put a poll up on the Twitch or on the stream, okay. kind of saying, what do you think the players should do? And you'll get to kind of you, you know, vote mm -hmm. to determine what they should do. Within a, a list of Murder. possibilities. So you won't be able to, like, I think they should all jump off a cliff, because we're not going to offer you that option. Unless, of course, jumping off a cliff is a possible sure. solution to the situation yeah. you're in. This is happening. That might be fun. Are you crab people? I'm going to be a hombre. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So we're going to do it? That's happening. Uh, no, no, so I don't know. That's, what? that's a creature. That's not, oh. that's not PC rules. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, um, although in the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, if you wanted to play a uh, a Simic ex experiment, I think there are rules for that in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. Bye, Ollie. So, I should probably actually. Take this is definitely one of those situations where they're spoiled for choice. Oh my god! So it requires them to do a little bit of digging into what's available, and it sounds cool. Done more digging. Um, Wait. You know how it is. There's more Merfolk over here. Wait. But yeah, I think all of them have Merfolk in them. Yeah. The idea with the Planeswalker class, which I'll be kind of doing mm -hmm. a little bit of a, a detailed discussion of probably uh, Wednesday of this week via live stream right here in the same channel, probably 7-ish on Wednesday. But the, the idea with the Planeswalker class is that I tried to model it off of playing Magic, model it off the lore of Magic, and model it off of my absolute favorite Magic the Gathering novel of all time, the very first one that came out, Arena. Um, so I've tweaked things just a little bit to reflect the way everything worked in that novel while still trying to remain true to kind of the modern version of Magic the Gathering. So in this particular case, the big change is that all of their spells, all the players' spell spells when they play Planeswalkers, are actually kind of tied up in tokens. And these tokens can take different shapes. So for mm -hmm. instance, um, you might have a small animal skull covered in runes to represent a spell that is, you know, kind of necromancy-based, usually black magic, stuff like that. Um, it might be a little, like, animal totem thing for a green spell, you know, maybe summoning creatures or whatever the case may be. So because they're all tied up in these physical tokens, they're basically carrying around these satchels full of spells, kind of to represent the cards in a magic deck which poses the possibility of someone stealing one of their tokens and thus they lose the spell, or them kind of looting tokens from monsters or enemies or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of the plan behind that. Um, 
It's a little bit different from standard spell casting in D&D, where wizards just, they've got their spell book, they're able to study up on their spells, and then unless someone steals their spell book, they're usually pretty good to go. Or sorcerers who can just kind of cast stuff whenever they want, so assuming they've got the components or are in focus. So that's the idea there. And then they can only attune to a certain number of tokens at a time. Again, kind of to represent you can only have a certain number of cards in your deck at any given time. So that's the idea. They'll be able to choose affinities to different kinds of mana. Um, I think Samson might already have an idea as to where he's leaning in that regard. What are you thinking? It's definitely black and something else. Okay. You're definitely going to be a black mage with something mixed in. But so he's definitely. going for a dual color, ultimately. But he's going to start off with black mana. With a black affinity. Yeah. So that's cool. Gotta stay true to my magic roots. <laughs> Sophia, do you have any inclinations yet? Um, probably green and something else, so. Okay. Leaning towards kind of druidish. I'm staring at these, uh. Where were you? Oh boy. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the river heralds. Merfolk. Merfolk. Oh, cool. Druid going on there. Okay. That's kind of a cool yeah. druidic Sounds class. Sounds like, like fun. That. Yeah. yeah. Andrew, how about you? Um, I was thinking maybe I'll play red. Or I'll take red as my first color. Okay. And uh, are the werewolves playable? Ooh. Can I be a werewolf? Can I see? Yeah, sure. I want to say that there were rules for it, but I could be wrong. Oh yeah, I think it's just further back. Oh, that's four colors. I think. One moment, please. <laughs> that's all we've been doing is staring at these books yeah. the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I think so, I'm going to go Naga. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Sounds um, fun. Then they have immunities to poison and stuff, which could help. So, so you're probably gonna go black green eventually. Black green, maybe. Uh, yeah, probably. I mean, because we're going to Ra we're gonna be mm -hmm. on Ravnica, and I don't know how much we're gonna get into guilds huh. and stuff. But I would definitely probably lean towards Golgari. Yeah. So that's interesting. I thought that there were vampire rules for vampires in that. Nope. Clean ship document, but didn't look like there were. You said there were some in Zendikar, right? Yeah, I think there's some in Zendikar. Can you see the Zendikar one? But I don't think there's any werewolves in Zendikar. Yeah, I don't think it's a Zendikar no, thing. Yeah. Really. Werewolves are just Innistrad, I think. Yeah. But we can make it happen if you really want. That's all right. I was mostly, so I figured you're going to go black-green, and she's going to go blue-green, and then I thought I'd just take green-red, and then we all share a green affinity. That'd be cool. That's and interesting. Then, okay. Um, Innistrad, green-red is vampire, or werewolves, and so I was trying to... So you can play a shifter from the Eberron stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of werewolf-esque. Um, and there are rules via Unearthed Arcana for that. So I can pull those up if you'd like. Um, I don't know. I can just... What do you want to do, baby? <laughs> That's fine. I can just pick up... I'm not sure why not. Let's do that. Yeah, let me, take, let me pull it up. Okay. Trying to... Give in to your heart's desire. Yeah. <laughs> Arling Cory. That's her name. The... Vampire, or sorry, the werewolf planeswalker from Innistrad. That's my favorite set. Yeah, yeah I mean, like at least aesthetically, like I love the visuals for Innistrad. But it looks really good. Yeah, Innistrad's like the first set I actually got like competitively in the Magic. Really? Yeah. Um, okay, so according to the Unearthed Arcana Shifter um, stuff, you get a bonus of plus one to your decks, mm -hmm. and you can shift as a bonus action, which gives you temporary hit points. Equal to your level plus your con modifier, and then you get a special feature depending on what kind of shifter you are. Uh, you get dark vision. Okay. So there are a couple different kinds of shifters. Um, there's beast hide, mm -hmm. increases your constitution score, and then while you're shifted, you get a plus one bonus to AC. Cliff walk, you get an additional bonus to your dex. Um, actually, I don't know if this is the most recent version. Hold on a sec. Maybe there was something in. That's fine. Maybe this is. I still can't think of a name. Kalistar. <laughs> Naga, Merfolk, and a werewolf walk into a bar. 
Ah, okay, here it is. <laughs> this is it's the wet bar. This is the more recent version. Nice. So you do get a bonus plus one to your dex. You get dark vision of 60 feet. You are, you have 30 foot walking speed, proficiency in perception. You can shift. You get you do get the temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution modifier. You do that once per rest. And then if you go beast hide, you get a plus two to your constitution. You get proficiency with the athletic skill. And you get additional temporary hit points and a plus one bonus to AC. So that's a little bit stronger. Long tooth, you get plus two to strength, proficiency in intimidation, and you can make a bite attack as a uh, instead of using a weapon. So that's cool. Swift stride, you get a bonus to your dexterity and charisma scores of one each. Proficiency in acrobatics, additional five feet walking, and then while you're shifted, you get an additional five feet of movement, and you can move to up to ten feet as a reaction when the enemy ends its turn within five feet of you. That does not provoke opportunity attacks. So that's kind of cool. That's so pretty cool. And then you've got Wild Hunt Shifters as well. These guys are trackers. They get plus two to wisdom, proficiency with survival. Um, you can mark a creature. It makes it easier for you to track them. And you have advantage on wisdom checks. Hmm. So some really cool shifter stuff, actually. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I remember when, I, when the first Unearthed Arcana came out for the shifter rules, mm -hmm. I was kind of under-impressed or underwhelmed. Um, I like these. I think these kind of reflect more of like a werewolf type. Yeah, that's not great. Um, and as the game goes on, we could always tweak it if we want to make it even more werewolf-esque, where like you're sure. actually affected by the moon. Gotcha. So, um, but I think this is a good baseline to start with, and we can tweak as we go. Seems solid. Okay. Let me just check on this. All right. So, um, I don't know if you want to pull it up on your phone. I might be able to email it to you. Are you able, if yeah. I would do it that way? Yeah, you can email it to me. This is for the shifter stuff? Yeah. Okay. And it is... What now? Uh, do you have your phone? Uh, it is in my purse. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Uh, if you want to type in your uh, email, email. Cool. That way, I'm not announcing it online. Uh, I don't know how much. Go harass Andrew at www. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trolling begins. So. <laughs> and for those of you watching, please let us know how the um, audio is. We're using a Yeti microphone, kind of centrally located, set to just like panoramic sound. Um, so let us know if it's pick, picking us up well, or if it's not picking one person up, or anything like that. So, uh, I recently got into Keyforge and started writing a bunch for it, and uh, I've had to drop. I've had to drop a lot of rules I had about my privacy online recently. Oh yeah. Because I decided to publish that under my full name. Ah. Uh -huh. So it's been. It's been Are you doing reviews and stuff for them, or? Uh, I reviewed all the cards. Um, and then I've written um, basically um, deck techs or deck guides awesome. on a combo deck. Cool. Yeah, just barely starting into that. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sweet. Whew. So that's been an interesting experience for me because I've normally been very protective of any personal information about and me getting online. Twitch is really freaking me out. Like every time I go back to check the comments, like the, the, audio, the video is black or blank on my phone. So I'm worried that it's cutting out. And then I reload it and it's fine. So, again, let us know if something's not working on the stream, because first time doing it, there's always some kind of technical issue. So, any help you can offer in fixing that would be great. But, so it sounds like we've got a sounds fine to me. red mana affi affiliated shifter slash werewolf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, You're going to go with the... The blue-green merfolk druid. Okay. And are you focusing on blue first? Um, probably green first, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. And then you're gonna go vampire. No, I'm gonna go naga. Oh, you're naga. naga. That's yeah. right. Okay. Awesome. I'm very happy about that. The nagas are pretty cool. <clears throat> they are pretty cool. So, um, we don't have official character sheets yet since this is the first session. We're still kind of charting stuff out. So we're just writing it out on regular paper, and we'll transfer it over to official character sheets later, and we will put those up online somewhere if people want to look over them. So. Yeah. 
All right, cool. So, stats. Everybody's favorite slash least favorite part of the game, <laughs> uh, depending on how they turn out. So, oh, sure. it's the age-old question. Do we roll, or do we point by? I know the first time we ever played D&D, we played with Andrew's brother, and we rolled our characters. My character turned out so stupid. I, <laughs> or I, was, I was a clumsy thief, and I had, like, no sneak ability, so I was tripping over everything. Oh. And as fun as that was... You were the it, thief from Conan, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty ridiculous, but it is a lot of fun, but it can go really wonky. Yeah. It can. So the, there are a couple different ways you can roll stats. You can do super hardcore, which is rolling 3d6, take them as they land, and you do them in order, starting with strength and going to charisma. I don't like to do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> um... There is also, you can do just 3d6, assign them however. That's still a little bit strict. I prefer what's in the player's handbook, which is you just roll 4d6, take out the lowest, and assign them in whatever order you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, again, that's there's still some chance involved with that. Yeah. Um, I like to toss in, like, you can re-roll one of your ones once, because sometimes you get, like... Two, three, one, four, and it's like, well, that's you know going to be bad either way. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, if I re-roll the one and get a five, at least it's a semi-passable stat. Um, that's why you make sure you're playing a, a class you don't need charisma in, and you dump the low number of charisma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, like to be mean to you. how about this? Let's say you roll forty-six, drop the lowest. Okay. If your total is a, if the total of your three highest dice is a ten or less. Mm-hmm. Or is less than ten. You can re-roll a one once. Okay. 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 Sounds good. Sound fair? Yep. Sounds okay. great. Now, age-old D and D magic, <laughs> legit magic. The only dice you want to use when you are rolling stats. Which can I step away and grab mine really quick? Sure. Yeah. Because the only dice you ever want to use when you're rolling your stats for a D&D character oh. are standard white black pip monopoly d6s. I don't think we have These those. will give you good stats every time. Okay. You're all welcome to do whatever you want. Gonna I'm be just rebels. this is my experience. <laughs> I have had some atrociously bad characters when I rolled stats with other dice. Yeah. So whenever I'm rolling stats, I stick with the 4d6, the four monopoly dice. Okay. And it never fails me. You know, maybe we should... I'm going to pick these because we they remind me of... Mine. Betrayal last night. And, uh, I got all my bad rolls out of the system. I hope I got all my <laughs> bad rolls. Six and you roll two, you're good. We're very experienced at rolling low. Wasn't your strategy for me being the traitor that I would just roll zero? Oh, yeah, that was, that was the plan last night. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't have to worry because I'm going to fail It worked out pretty well, roll. actually. Live by the die, die by the die. Yeah, That's true. Still one, though. That is a very oh, okay. true adage. Huh? Um, no. I'm going to take that one. you going to take that one? Yeah. The tiny one? Yeah. So. So you're saying four, toss the lowest. Yep. And then. And you can re roll a one once. Do you need a couple more? Yes, please. Oh, you're going to. Uh, Sorry about the unexpected mm-hmm. close up of my face there, folks. You're very um, beautiful. It's okay. I don't know about that. I meant to do my hair before this, and yeah. Oh, well. It's fine. I'm not here because I'm trying to look pretty. So. I'm here because we want to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Nerds are the prettiest. Yeah. All real at the same time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm okay with this. I got 12 total, so. I'm... 13. Alright, and just go ahead and list them down the side, and then you'll assign them when you're done with your full list. So we got a 13, a 12, and a. Uh, 14. 14? Nice. All right. Wow. Yeah. 12, 13, 14. Pretty good rolls across the board. Let's keep it going. Let's keep this gravy train rolling. Mm-hmm. Oh. Let's see what everybody gets. Two? Whenever you guys are ready. All right. Okay. Ooh. I got a one. Is your total of all three other dice less than ten? No. All right. So I got eleven. Yeah, me too. Twelve again. Okay. It's looking like I'm going to have low charisma again. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we'll just do the talking. Yeah, you don't all need to be good at charisma. Just one of you needs to be good at charisma. And if none of you are good at charisma, well, that's fun, too. Yeah. Okay, I'm liking this. 13. 10. Another 13. 
Okay. No abysmally low rolls yet. That's good. Triple six is here. Oh. Oh. That's a good one. No, no, 12. Ah, thank I you for the recommendation. Only rolled 12. 11. 12. Okay. Hopefully, rotating the microphone makes it a little bit easier to hear the players as well. Yep. Uh, let me know if it doesn't. We have a lot to say. And let me know if that makes it harder to hear me. If so, I'll adjust the microphone. And uh, oh. thank you very much Ooh. to... Oh my god. Great Mercy Action for the recommendation on that. that Is that 13. an 18? 17. A 17. Oh, nice. that's, that's awesome. 13. Okay. I, could, yeah. I can only reroll a 1 if, it, if my total is 10 or less, right? Yeah. Okay. Come on, I need one super high one. <laughs> Just one super high one. Uh, that works. 11. 15. Four. 8. I mean, I can't be mad after rolling a 17. So then you can reroll your 1. Oof. So 6. Nope. Oh. <laughs> 8. Okay. It's okay. I told you, man, the four white Monopoly dice. Uh, cool. I think that's it, right? That sounds right. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. Samson, go ahead and read off your stats. So, well, I haven't assigned them yet, but I got a 13, 11, 13, ah, 11, 13, Sorry. and 15. No problem. One of our cameras just cut out, folks. Uh-oh. Oh, no. So, do, what do I? I'm just copying off him. Strength, <laughs> constitution, dexterity, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. So I think mm-hmm. you're gonna. It's really dependent on what class we're gonna build mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. how you want to sign them. But all right, so technical difficulties. <laughs> Yay! Technical difficulties. Need to make a technical difficulty screen. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Be so great a graphic. Uh, like whoops, a, the rocks fall. A one on a 20 sider. One moment, folks, while I fix this up. That works. This camera likes to. There we go. You know what? Let's remove that real quick. That's for easy. This you camera likes to not cooperate. I always have choice paralysis. Yeah, okay, so I committed to mine already. Mm-hmm. So I'll put 12 into strength, uh, 13 into constitution, 8 into dex, 12 into int, uh, 10 into wisdom, and 12 into charisma. I like how your intelligence is just int. That's the one one you're not going to say fully. Nope, yep. <laughs> just int. <laughs> not int real good. It ain't good. No. It ain't bad. Well, so my dex is actually bad. I'm not sure what I'm going to play yet, class-wise. Oops. That's the one we're fixing, right? No, this is the oh. one we're fixing. Well. Yep. I don't know what class I'm going to do. I just picked, I tried to just guess what werewolves need. And for the most part, some amount. All right, so you're a giant snake lady. Or snake person. Snake man. And you're yeah. a giant aqua person. I'm slippery. <laughs> At least I can look, appear somewhat human looking, I think, most of the time, so I thought I should try to have some, one of my better stats be charisma, so that's why it's a 12. It's actually pretty good thinking, because I imagine we'll be running into quite a few humans, so... Yeah. Um, unfortunately, my highest roll is just a 13, so I don't think there's All right. that significant of a difference. Camera fixed, let us know if that didn't work. Sorry, I don't know why it cuts out like that. I thought I fixed those settings, but I guess I have to look into it more. <laughs> yeah, you get to see behind the curtain when we're uh, doing streams this way. It's always fun to find these little kinks. But it sounds like we've got our stats set up pretty well. Um, oh, can you hand me that mouse right there? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Maybe one more person that beats things. Space. All right. Yeah. All right. It's good. <clears throat> so, sorry. Go ahead and read off your stats for me again, Samson. So, I'm um, trying to figure out what I'm assigning them right now. 
So Sophia's done. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. Wanna, yeah. All right. So my strengths that's seventeen, okay. Constitution eleven, Dexterity fourteen, Intelligence twelve, Wisdom thirteen, and Charisma eleven. Okay. Does that count in your racial modifiers? No. I haven't found them. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, if you like, I can always take a look if you mm-hmm. can't seem to find it, because I know sometimes those PDFs are a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, so it should be like right. Oh, you might need right the traits. The traits. Yeah. A little behind the scenes, yeah, exactly. The classes. Hmm. Is there like uh, more of a generic look opening up ahead? Maybe. And we're hoping it might just be that in future episodes, so much, like, all these little mm-hmm. technical issues won't be any, an issue anymore. We and it'll be mm-hmm. nice and smooth. Yeah. It'll look super polished and professional, uh-huh. just like you were watching Critical Role or something like that. It's not gonna happen. It's really. good to have goals, though. Yeah, yeah it's good to have goals. We'll nice to have dreams. Yeah, we'll build a stage, get a nice wooden table. Yeah, exactly. We'll get s- corporate sponsors and all kinds of. We'll get voice actors to take all of our places. <laughs> It'll be perfect. <laughs> Everything's um, just CG. Yeah, exactly. It's all just CGI. It'll be a green screen with one person covered in ping pong balls in front of it. <laughs> um, so, as a DM, mm-hmm. I like to try to do voices, but Having mentioned Critical Role, I am not Matt Mercer. I am not a voice actor. So if my voices are bad, you just have to deal with it. I'm sorry. Our base level is, can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. As long as you can understand me, that's the key thing. Yeah, so I get a plus two to wisdom when I choose green merfolk. Okay. So did you have a 14 in there somewhere? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you should get a plus one to something else. Most races give a plus two to one stat and a plus one to another stat. Merfolk. Ability score increases uh, charisma by plus one. Okay. So if you wanted to get the most out of your... Because you're playing green, right? Mm-hmm. So green, your spellcasting wi- um, modif- your spellcasting ability for green casters is going to be your wisdom. Mm-hmm. So since you get a plus two to wisdom, you may want to try putting a 14 into your yeah. wisdom to bump it up to a 16. Because that would give you the best bonus. Switch those. Okay. And did you decide on yours? Yeah, I'm going to go uh, strength 13, constitution 13, but I get a plus 2 bonus okay. for the racial trait. 13 to dex, 15 to intelligence, but again a plus 1 to that, so it'll be okay. 16. And then 11 for both wisdom and charisma. Okay. As a black spellcaster, as a black man affi- uh, affiliation, you are going to be using constitution as your spellcasting modifier. So I don't know if you want to switch that 15 in your intelligence into your um, constitution. That would give you a 17 constitution. Yeah, let's do that. I'm not trying to guide anybody, just letting you know what you're up to. No, please, are. please yeah. guide me. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Need all the help I can get. And then, Andrew, what have you got? What's the, uh, oh. Well, so what's the, do you remember what red is casting? Red is strict. Red is strength. All right, that's fine. Yeah, I won't get a bonus. Anyway, so uh, after racial bonuses, so I was going to take the long tooth okay. trait. Um, so that puts me at 14 strength, 13 constitution, 9 dex, 10, or sorry, 12 intelligence, 10 wisdom, and 12 charisma. Hmm. I feel like your stats are significantly lower than the others. I rolled four 12s and a 13. It's okay, I'll carry on. Or three 12s and a 13. <laughs> three 12s, a 13, a 10, and a 9? And an 8. And, oh, and an 8. That got bonus. Uh, that got a plus 1. Oh. <laughs> that one got a plus 1. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. Go ahead and re-roll your 8, and you can reassign your stats if you'd like. Okay. But you're, whatever you get this time, that's what you're stuck with. So. Yeah, I rolled a three you twos did. on that 8. I saw that, yes. And you re-rolled a 1 to get one of those 2s. I did. I worked hard for it. All right, there we go. 14. 14. Woo! That's nice. a lot better than eight. Yes. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice trade-off. All right. So now you can go ahead and rearrange your stats as you desire. So. Great. Thank you. No problem. See, See Being a DM is, you know, you, you give a little and then you take everything. <laughs> this is the net, the beginning. The, this is a the free sample. Exactly. Yeah. The, the okay, first one's help. free. <laughs> you had to pay for all the rest of them. All right. Um, so you got your stats on that. Make sure that you... Well, you don't have to write down your stuff. Basically, my intention, if you guys are cool with this, mm-hmm. is once we kind of have everything written down, I will put together your character sheets electronically via PDF and I'll email them to you. 
so you can kind of look over them before the next session. Um, but that way it'll include all the racial modifier or racial traits, class traits, all that stuff. You guys cool with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, that's right. great. Awesome. All right, so everybody is going to start with a D8 hit points, um, but you get the maximum. So right. you have eight plus whatever your constitution modifier is in hit points to start off with. That's really good for me. Yeah, you're my, starting off my with My constitution's 11. actually going to be um, 18 because I get two for the race and then one for the black, so it'll be 18. You don't get a bonus for black. Oh, it's just the plus it's one for the casting? All, yeah, basically all it is is that you, your spells, when someone's trying to resist them, they're you're gonna, they're going to be defending against your constitution save. Uh, okay, all right, cool. Or so 17. Be, yeah, right. 17. So then you're going to end up with a uh, with 11 hit points to start with. Nice. Sophia, how many do you have? Okay, we started at 8 and... Add your constitution modifier. So, I, um, not I apologize. I forgot that you guys have not played a lot of D&D. &D. <laughs> so um, what is your strength? My strength at 17. Okay, so you're going to have a plus three modifier for that. Okay. So next to set the 17 in parentheses, mm -hmm. just put plus three. And then what's your next one? Uh, constitution is 11. So that's going to be plus zero. Okay. And then dexterity is 13. So that's plus one. And then intelligence is 12. Plus one as well. And then we did the... Race modifiers for wisdom and charisma. Okay, so what's your wisdom total? Uh, my wisdom is 16 and charisma is 12. So your uh, wisdom modifier is plus 3. Okay. And your charisma modifier is plus 1. Okay. So basically for every every two points in a stat gives mm -hmm. you a plus 1, okay. an additional plus 1 to it. Um, 10 and 11 are both considered average, so there's zero. Mm -hmm. So then once you get to 12 and 13, it's plus one, 14, 15, it's plus two, etc. And if you go below that, then it's minus one, minus two, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, so you have your all, all your bonuses written down? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So how many hit points do you have? Sorry, it's going to be eight that. plus your constitution modifier. Oh, so 10. 10, okay. Thank you. Awesome, no problem. All right, so we've got that taken care of. The next thing we're going to look at is... Mm -hmm. no. So Sorry, next thing we want to look at nine. is we want to look at the... So, hold this back up. Proficiencies. Uh, so you're all proficient in light armor Okay. to start with. You have a few different weapons that you're proficient in, but I'll write those in because you don't, shouldn't have to list those out. Um, you're all proficient with dexterity saving throws. Samson? Yeah. You're going to get to choose, do you want to have a sickle and shield for proficiency, or do you want to have a glaive proficiency? Kind of representing, like, big Grim Reaper scythe type of thing. That'd be pretty shield, nice. of course, increases yeah, your AC. Yeah, it looks pretty crazy. Like a Grim Reaper snake. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's go with the glaive. Okay. The glaive. Cool. Yeah. So you're proficient with a glaive. Uh, you are you also are proficient in the constitution saving throws. Okay. And you can choose either Thieves' Kits or Poisoner's Kits. Poisoner's Kit. Poisoner's Kit? Okay. I like it. Um, Sophia, mm -hmm. you have proficiency with medium armor. You will get a choice of an additional ranged weapon or thrown weapon and a simple weapon, but we'll worry about those mm -hmm. later. You can choose Woodcarver's Tools or Navigator's Tools to be proficient in. Probably Navigator. Okay, yeah. so Navigator's Tools. And you're proficient with uh, wisdom saving throws as well. Mm -hmm. And then but cool. you are going to be proficient with a two-handed martial melee weapon of your choice. Cool. So it could be a great axe, two-handed sword, etc. Um, you will be proficient in either smith's tools or a climber's kit. Uh, climber's kit. Okay. Uh, and you are proficient in the strength saving throw. In addition to that, let me scroll. You are proficient in either the insight or athletics skill. Uh, insight. Okay. 
Sophia, you're proficient in either nature or stealth. <laughs> I like being sneaky. What's your dex score? Um, my dex is at 14 total. Okay, that's not too yeah. bad. Um, I'll do nature. Okay. I'm going to go full hippie. Never go full hippie. One more river. <laughs> uh, and Samson, you are either proficient in intimidation or medicine. Uh, the medicine makes the most sense because I'm going to be poisoning and my charisma's low. Yeah, let's do that. Do medicine. Okay. Sounds good. You all will also get proficiency in two of the following skills, and you can choose. Arcana, History, Insight, Investigation, Medicine, Nature, or Religion. You get two of those. I'm going to go investigation and medicine, just okay. to pump that up farther. I wonder... <clears throat> I kind of want to get... I guess we'll get into that a little bit more later on. What's that? Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of would love to get feedback on character and kind of let some decisions be made by whoever's watching. Mm. Maybe not so much in the building process, but maybe later on we'll, we can get into that a little bit more. But Yeah, for sure. That would be kind of fun. That's definitely part of the goal, is to have the, the audience chiming in and saying, like, oh, hey, let's, uh, you know, we want you guys to do this thing, or this thing, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so there will be audience votes and stuff like that later on. Character creation, though, I, you know, just because it's a relatively low viewership, yeah. it's our first yeah. episode, um, that might be a little bit hard to get. Um, but we'll see what happens. Right. So. Cool. So uh, I picked up Investigation as well, and I took Arcana as the other okay. uh, proficiency. I think I want to go with investigation and insight, but I'm also either investigation or arcana. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Investigation insight? Sure, if you want. I'm going to go with that. I already had a proficiency in insight. Mm -hmm. so. And what do you have? Yeah. I went with investigation of medicine. So investigation, investigation. So we all took investigation, and then you took medicine, okay. insight, mm -hmm. and arcana? Yep. We're all detectives. So we should all. I was gonna say they're all like uh, they're all <laughs> magic detectives. <laughs> Let's go to his job. Let's do it. I, I like this. The well, Interplanar okay, Detective Agency (IPA). <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> no. So, yes. Did we all take the oath? <laughs> What's going on? All right. So that's cool. We got that done. Um, so you got your bonus proficiencies. So you all are going to be able to, to use the planes walking ability. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Uh, you can use it, your action to travel to another plane of the multiverse. Um, I have the final say on where you arrive in that plane. Okay. Um, you may use this ability as a reaction, but you cannot choose the plane to which you travel. Your DM determines the destination in this case. So you can basically go, yeah, that attack is probably going to kill me. Reaction. I'm going to planes walk. And Not where am I? Yeah, exactly. You show up where you show up. <laughs> Dang it. Um, it's the infinite improbability drive. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there will be other compl complications along with using it that way, but we'll talk about those later when it happens, because we want it to be a surprise. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be delightful. Oh, yeah. For everyone at all. Audience no choice. bad feelings. That's exactly what it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> I, really hope, I really hope one of them has to use their reaction, for, like their planes walking it like that, so that I can... Leave it up to you guys to figure out where they go. Um, but, so, you all are going to start with um, two daily mana. So basically, every morning when you wake up, you get to generate two mana of whatever colors you have an affinity for. Right okay. now you only have one affinity, so that's easy. You can have a max of two mana per day. So mm -hmm. that's not going to be much right now. But when you get into later levels, you actually are able to siphon mana from the environment um, in order to mm. fu um, fuel more spells. Gotcha. But at, low, at levels one and two, you can't do that. Um, I'm just trying not to die. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, let me... All right, chat, let me ask you this, for those of you who are still sticking around and watching. Should I start on level one or level two? Level one, of course, is where everybody starts, but level two gives them something, just a little extra oomph that I quite like. So let me know what you think... Um, and <laughs> we have one vote for level two. Let me experience the taste. I don't know if you guys have preferences. 
I think I'm leaning towards level two, so if we don't hear from chat, I'll yeah. probably go that route. I heard a lot of people like to start level two, but... Yeah, it, it gives people just a little bit more resources, um, right. and just a few more resources, I should say, to make use of. Well, you have to kill um, Don't have to kill rats right away. Exactly, yeah. No, no interplanar rats. Although, a swarm of plague rats may, not, may be an interesting encounter. <laughs> so you said the way that the magic spells work, is that we have like a satchel full of spells of some sort? Yep. How do I find these spells? And... So, you start at level one. You start with a single level one mm -hmm. spell and four cantrip spells. Okay, yeah. And we will talk about those now. Sure. They're not just any magic card ever. No. Okay. No, they're, they come from the D&D spell list. Okay. Okay. Um, gotcha. We can give them I was... Magic the Gathering names. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Red mages so, just do storm. Um, from the um, for black mana, you the spells are for the cantrips, chill touch, ray of frost. There's a bunch of them. Don't try to run them yeah, all yeah. out. Chill touch, ray of frost, toll the dead, infestation, vicious mockery, spare the dying, green flame blade, and poison spray. So you get to choose four of those. Okay, keeping with the theme, definitely going with poison spray. Okay. Uh, Chill Touch um, is something where you can basically touch someone at range, like with, through magic. It's like right. a ghostly hand reaches out and touches them. And can they can't regain hit points until the beginning of your next turn, I think. Oh, they're not here. Okay. And if it's an undead, then they have disadvantage on their next attack roll, I believe is the way it works. Okay. And then what is the Toll the Dead? What is toll the Dead is um, you make a, they make a saving throw or a spell, you make a spell attack, I forget. And they take damage. If they've already taken damage, if they're below their hit point maximum, they take extra damage. Okay. And then the last one I'm curious about is the Green Flame Blade. Green Flame Blade is something where you make a melee weapon attack, and then um, and technology too. whoever you hit suffers the effects of the attack, and um, you deal five magic or five fire damage to something that's adjacent to them. Ooh, nice. So they have to be right next to them for it to work, but it's kind of cool. Okay, and then the... Um, what was it? Uh, frost touch? Was that what it was called? Ray of frost. Ray of frost. Okay. Or chill touch. Which one? There's two. Different. Chill touch. That was okay. the first one you were describing. Yep. Right? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go toll the dead, poison spray, chill touch, and green flame blade. Okay. Cool. Four cantrips, just like that. I like it. Um, we'll go into your first level spells here in a second. Let's go to Sophia for green. Okay. Well, I, was... I have the document you sent us. Oh, oh, perfect. Oh, awesome. awesome. Should I keep these in front of her, or should I just uh, try and probably. read, get jump ahead of you, while I figure this out? Say it again. Do you want to just help Sophia, or yeah. should I keep this up okay. for Sophia to read, and then, or I'll, should I try and figure out my own stuff while you're helping Sophia? Sounds good to me. All right. And then you can just list it out when when we get to you. Great. So you have, can choose between Acid Splash, mm -hmm. Thorn Whip, Shillelagh, Shape Water, Mold Earth, Druid Craft, Control Flames. Or Primal Savagery. What is Primal Savagery? <laughs> primal Savagery is a cantrip that basically lets you grow claws and mm -hmm. make a, a melee attack against somebody. Okay. And then there was the Thorn Whip, and then the Mold Earth, and Shape Water that sounded kind of neat. Okay. So Shape Water is pretty much exactly what it sounds mm -hmm. like. You can, you know, make shapes out of water and do interesting things with it. Mold Earth, same thing, but with Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one? Thorn Whip. Mm -hmm. Thorn Whip is uh, when you basically hit somebody at a certain range and you pull them 10 feet closer to you and deal damage to them. Okay, I like Thorn Whip. Okay. Um, so the Shillelagh cantrip mm -hmm. actually takes basically like a club. Yeah, it like and, blesses it or something. Yeah, it yeah. increases its effectiveness. So I'll probably do Shillelagh and Thorn Whip. Okay. And you get two more. Druidcraft is kind of a catch-all. It mm -hmm. lets you do like interact with nature to a certain extent. Um, I can pull up the exact effects in just a moment. I love the way Shillelagh sounds. Yeah. It's, it's a great name. It's, it's taken like me three thing. sessions to say it correctly. Yeah. I'm like, the Shalala. <laughs> Shalala. I'm yeah. the Shalala my club. The yeah. Pathfinder thing we're doing, she has Shillelagh as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Then, it's not right. beneficial. So, um, with Druidcraft, you can use your action to create one of the following effects within the range of the spell. The range is 30 feet. Uh, you create a harmless sensory effect that predicts what the weather will be for the next 24 hours. This, effects lasts, this The effect lasts for six seconds or one round. 
Uh, you make a flower blossom, a seed pod open, or a leaf bud bloom. Uh, you create a harmless nature-related sensory effect. In, it must be contained in a five-foot cube, or you can light or put out a small flame. I think I'll go with mold earth. Okay. Should I go shape water or druid craft? Shape water. Shape water. Okay. The shape of water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, perfect for more folk, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. that, that movie was all about you. Yep. <laughs> Fun story. That was my dad. <laughs> <laughs> was that also your mom to you? I'm curious. <laughs> Did that work out like that? No, nah, he got around. Uh, <laughs> We can't spell shillelagh. There we go. Close enough. What'd you pick? So uh, uh, Firebolt. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Yep. Uh, dancing lights. Okay. Thunderclap. Okay. And lightning lure. All right. Cool. Nice. Sounds good to me. You also get one first level spell from your list. I don't know if you've already picked yours. Right. Because I was. I'll let you do that while I work with the rest. We'll go in reverse order. So, um, Sophia, mm -hmm. you get. <clears throat> Shield, which temporarily increases your AC by five mm -hmm. so against one attack or for one round, basically, <clears throat> in response to an attack. Um, ensnaring strike, entangle, which both kind of do slightly, kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Fog cloud summons a big cloud of fog that limits visibility. Um, fairy fire, which just lights up different areas. I think it does something else as well, but I have to check. Um, goodberry, which Gives everybody sustenance for 24 hours and reduce, uh, restores hit points. That's one hit point per berry. And I think you make 10, 8, something like that. Yep. It's a handful of berries. Beast Bond lets you bond with an animal. Animal Friendship. So Animal Friendship will potentially get a... I think if... I could be wrong about this. But Animal Friendship makes a an animal that is otherwise potentially hostile to you, not hostile. Mm -hmm. Beast Spawn takes a non-hostile animal and makes it loyal to you. So, <clears throat> Hunter's Mark, which lets you mark a target, and then for the rest of the combat, you deal extra damage to them. Long Strider, it increases your speed. Mm -hmm. Hail of Thorns, you make a ranged weapon attack, and if it hits, the target takes the arrow damage. Potential, let's just say it's an arrow. The target takes an arrow, the arrow damage, and then... They, they and everybody adjacent to him takes a d10 damage from the thorn explosion. Snare, which helps you basically just trap somebody. Um, speak with animals or alarm. Yeah. Thank you. I really like bonding with animals and talking to them, but I also really like Entangle. Let me get specific descriptions of those, just to make sure I'm not crazy here. So I basically picked all my spells on whatever they sounded most like magic cards that sound red to me. So okay. <laughs> that's, I have no idea what anything does. But uh, so for first level, I picked Compelled Duel because that reminds me a lot of like the Threaten or like take control of your opponent's creature and then you get to attack with it for a turn spell. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took Compelled Duel. Okay. I'm going to speak with animals. You're going to speak uh, with animals? Hold on a second. All right. Okay. So speak with animals. Mm -hmm. I got to figure out what's going on with this camera. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. So, we do have an audience vote for start at level two. Just let you do know. we? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, whoever that was. Oh, you're gonna An acronym of some sort. I'm sorry, I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that name. It has Y at the start, and that's the only vowel. Okay. We know who that is, yeah. yeah. And it's, it is an acronym, and I can't repeat what it means <laughs> because it's... <laughs> Inappropriate. <gasps> wow. Who would do such a thing? <laughs> All right, sorry. Technical difficulties for a moment. Um, we're going to actually take a slight break so we can all grab some water and everything. Okay. okay. So, pardon me. No worries. If I can do anything to help, let me know. Appreciate it. We will be back momentarily. Can I look up any of these spells in a book just so I can... Yeah. While you're doing that. That'd be a nice note to pick that I pick spells. I, I picked the spell. Like I said, I picked the spell based on what sounds like magic cards. We'll be back in about five minutes, folks.
This is a tough call. Some good spells here. All right. Hello again, everybody. We are back. Please let us know if you can't hear or see anybody. I think we should be good um, kind of for the rest of the stream. We won't be going too much longer. But let's uh, let's take a look at everybody's spells. What did everybody pick for first level spells? I'm going to go Arms of Hadar. Arms of Hadar. Okay, cool. What does Arms of Hadar do? I basically throw out some tendrils and hit everything in a 10 foot radius and they gotta make a safe throw against damage. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. All right, Sophia? I went with Speak With Animals because I wanna be Super Druid. All right, Super Druid. <laughs> yep. Giant stylized letter D on the chest <laughs> and mm -hmm. everything. Super all druid. nature, all day, people are awful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah, sure. <laughs> Andrew? Yeah, so like I said, Compelled Duel. Um, okay. I just assume that's the same thing as like take control of an enemy creature, untap it, and attack with it. So Compelled Duel in this particular case actually is you basically going, you're going to fight me. Yeah. And if you attack anybody else, you're going to suffer for it. Gotcha. So that's the idea behind Compelled Duel. Pretty close. Um, yeah, it can, be, it can be pretty awesome in the right circumstances. Yeah. So just like any other 5th edition spell. Yeah. Um, so, there was a vote for starting at second level, both among the, one amongst the players and one amongst the audience. So we're gonna do that. So real quick, um, everybody gets another D8 hit points plus your con modifier. You can choose to either roll the D8 and add, your, and add the number, or you can take half plus one of like what you could get. So on a D8, you would get five, because half is four plus one is five, plus whatever your con modifier is. So you can get a few more hit points if you roll well, but you can lose out on a lot of hit points if you roll badly. So, you know, it's up to if you. If I decide after I roll. <laughs> you cannot decide after you roll. Can I get a practice roll? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can practice roll as much as you want, but once you say this one counts... Okay, these are unofficial. All right. Just want to see how this, Seven. this oh, die is going to fill with me. Not official. <laughs> that, was, that was practice. <laughs> Okay, this one's official. It's Dang same it. number. It hurt you. Is it a two? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to roll mine official too. Official roll. Five. Eight. Oh, nice. nice. All right. But no practice roll. So you make sure you add your constitution modifier to that as well. So you're going to get five plus your three constitution modifier, Samson. Oh, sweet. So eight plus your 11 gives you 19. Yeah. You were now at 18. No, you're yeah. at 20. Uh, I was... I. For some reason, I keep looking at my strength and thinking that's my constitution. Gotcha. Your constitution I, modifier is yeah. plus two, right? That's plus one. That's 13 constitution. Oh, 13 constitution. Okay. Yeah. So then you, at first level, had nine. Yeah. You got nine again, so you have 18. Yeah. All right. So my constitution modifier is plus zero. I rolled a two. Gives you a total of 10 hit points. Yep. Okay. Beefy merfolk. Beefy merfolk. I'm staying behind you guys and just <laughs> throwing stuff at people. One more merfolk. Hey, just because you're one with nature doesn't mean you are, like, a mountain of hit points. 
So I'm one with nature, but nature is not one with me. <laughs> nature will still kill you dead. Yeah. Um, all right, so. Sorry about that. It's all good. Um, the next thing is, technically you don't gain spells when you gain levels. You have to find them during play. Mm-hmm. I think it would be cool if you all started with a second level spell. Now normally, spellcasters in D&D don't get access to second level spells until they hit third level. Mm-hmm. You guys are, as planeswalkers, you basically can gain access to spells early. The trick is you have to spend mana to cast spells equal to their level. Mm -hmm. So if you're casting a first level spell that's a blue spell, you spend one blue mana. If you're casting a second level spell that is a green spell, you cast, you spend two green mana. Mm -hmm. So at second level, having a second level spell, you actually are going to have three daily mana when you wake up. Okay instead of the two, so you get one extra point of mana every day. So you can choose to spe- to um, cast your second level spell, and if you do, that uses two of your three mana. Okay. So, that's kind of the trade-off. Gumby Moto says, Ravnica, go druid! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> druids! Selesnia, Selesnia, sorry. Um, Major cults. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically you could say Golgari, but I don't know. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so, you'll get to choose a second level spell. We'll get into that here in a few minutes. The key thing is at second level, you get a class feature called Mana Kick. So, when you cast a cantrip, a lot of cantri- cantrips scale with your level. <clears throat> Every five character levels, you your cantrips basically get beefier. So, like Firebolt is an example. Mm-hmm. Firebolt from levels one to four just does a D10 fire damage. Okay. When you hit, once you hit level five, it does two D10 fire damage. Okay. So with mana kick, anytime you cast a cantrip that scales with level, you can spend one mana mm-hmm. to basically jump it up to the next tier. Okay. So it makes your cantrips a little bit beefier. They're kind of meant to represent like uh, pump spells in. Magic, like sure. Fireball, Disintegrate, you know, giant things growth. like that. Giant Growth. Uh, no, Giant Growth, I don't think... Giant Growth doesn't... It's the other one. What's the one that... It's like two green and X, and you, oh, you X give growth? a creature plus X plus X. Untamed yeah. Might? That, I think that's what it is, yeah. Is that the one with the bear on it? Uh, it's got a guy that's, like, wishing a big punch. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's from Scar of the Mirrodin. Okay. Or at least that's why I first saw it. Gotcha. But yeah, basically it's meant to represent you pumping mana into a spell to make it stronger. Nice. So uh, your Firebolt would benefit from that. Um, your Chill Touch, I think, benefits from that. And your Poison Spray benefits from that, in your case. Nice. Um, some of your other ones might as well. We'll get into that later. But um, that's a mechanic that I'm really kind of excited to see in play. It's, again, really meant to make your cantrips a little bit more worthwhile as a spell. It's like, do I want to spend... Do I want to use a cantrip and spend a mana to do a little bit of extra damage with that cantrip, or do I want to use my first level spell to do whatever that's going to do for me? And the, the mana kick's only for cantrips, not spells, right? Correct. Okay. Only for cantrips. So yeah. Um, now, second level spells. You're going to get a few to choose from. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to do this now, or if you mm-hmm. want to do it maybe off stream. I think doing it now is kind of cool, but sure. that's yeah, I'm just looking at the list right now. All right, oh. so you're looking at the green list. Mm-hmm. Samson, um, I, I think I've shared the document with you. Probably have. Yeah. You might be able to pull it up on your phone. Oh, I think we like double. Well, you need second level there. You go. Mm-hmm. Okay, well. That sounds cool. We need to just talk about it. Someone mm-hmm. should be talking about it. Yeah, feel yeah. free, please. Earthbind. Talk us through it. Yeah, Earthbind sounds cool. Spike growth, spider climb. So I can spider, spider climb is always cool. Yeah. You can be a merfolk crawling along the ceiling. <laughs> it's not creepy at all. <laughs> I'm delightful. Uh, Maximilian's Earthen Grasp. Uh, it's... Let me pull up. Let me pull that one up. That's not one of the PHB spells, so I'm not quite as familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Or the acid arrow. 
I think I just have to take Shatter, just because it is a magic card. That, that, I'm going to continue with the trend of not knowing what these things do, but the closest, the closer they are to magic cards, especially red doing, ones, I'm, so excited. <laughs> I'm going to take them. So, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. Uh, you choose a five-foot un- five square unoccupied space on the ground that you can see. A medium-sized hand, basically a person-sized hand made from compacted soil, rises from there. It reaches for one creature you can see within five feet of it. Target makes a strength saving throw. On a fail, they take 2d6 bludgeoning damage, and they're restrained for the spell's duration. As an action, you can cause the hand to crush the restrained target, who must make a strength saving throw, otherwise it takes an additional 2d6 damage. (coughs) To break... (coughs) So sorry, folks. I apologize. Uh, To break out, the restrained target can make a strength check against your spell save DC on a success. They escape, and they're no longer restrained by the hand. And then as an action, you can cause the hand to reach for a different creature or to move. Um, so That sounds pretty useful. You basically need to stand back and go, giant hand made of rock. Yeah. Grab that guy and crush him rock to death. Rock bash. Yeah, exactly. And then Earthbind is just... Earthbind is any creature that it has a flight speed loses it, I believe. I get reach. That's a magic <laughs> card as well. I'm yeah. going to say, that's a, that's, that's a magic card, yeah. And it's Earthbind. green. Earthbind. 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 Oh. Uh, yeah, a creature you can, you can see must succeed on a strength save where its flying speed is reduced to zero uh, feet for the spell's duration. An airborne creature safely descends at 60 feet per round until it reaches the gr- ground or the spell ends. I'm going to go with the Death Grasp. All right, Maximilian's Earth and Grasp. I like it. And then you were asking about the Shatter spell? Yes. Oh, that's a pretty card. <laughs> Sorry. What's that one? Oh, Earth, the, uh, the, the he was art showing for, me the art. The, the art for Earth finds a little uh, oh, okay. not safe for work. <laughs> oh, I liked, yeah. I liked the art, though. I wasn't even looking at that. That's weird. I thought, I gotta make it I weird. thought Earthbind was a green spell. Me no? too. No? There's a green version of it, though. There probably is. I know that yeah. there's a lot of anti air in green. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Shatter. A sudden loud ringing noise, painfully intense, erupts from a point of your choice within range. And the range on it is something. Okay. <laughs> 60 feet. Each creature in a 10-foot sphere uh, centered on that point must make a constitution saving throw. The creature takes 3d8 thunder damage on a failed save, or half as much damage on a successful one. A creature made of inorganic material such as stone, crystal, or metal has disadvantage on the saving throw. A non-magical object that isn't being worn or carried also takes the damage if it's in the spell's area. Cool. So you can use it to shatter objects... Um, as well as Shatter's people. Yeah. Awesome. Much better than regular Shatter. Ah, that's right. Um, Gumby Moto just reminded it's Plummet in green. Oh. And it automatically destroys the flying creature. You're right. right. So I kind of split the difference. Um, took the D&D 5e Earthbind spell and made it green to represent kind of the Plummet thing, even though technically Earthbind is a red spell. And if anybody disagrees with me on that, I will happily duel you to the death um, <laughs> at a later date. To be determined by uh, an impartial third party. <laughs> so, um, Earth bu- or Ma- Maximilian's Earth and Grasp, mm-hmm. Shatter, so, and have you decided? I'm leaning towards Hold Person, but what is Crown of Madness? Is Crown of Madness. Don't ask questions, just pick it. it sounds cool. Exactly. Okay, you if know what? If it sounds like You're a death metal with song, then... Let's go with Crown of Madness. <laughs> you talk me into it. Awesome. Brown of Games. Yes, thank you, Phone. He's our edgy companion. <laughs> Poisoner, crown of you madness. Have the, uh, like you have the Peter Petrelli haircut from the latter part of, or like the middle part of Hero Season 1? Yes. Oh, oh. man, that was the worst. <laughs> it was almost as bad as Spider-Man 3 emo Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Start dancing. Right. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Uh, okay, so a humanoid you can see makes a wisdom save. If it fails, it becomes charmed by you and must use its action each turn to make a melee attack against a target of your choosing prior to making its movement. All right. I like it that. It can't target itself. You can choose no target, and it will act normally. Um, also doing so if there are no appropriate targets within its reach. You must use your action on every subsequent turn to maintain the spell, or it fails. The charm target may also make another wisdom save at the end of each of its turn to end the spell on a success. All right. That's not too bad. Sounds like some shenanigans. Yep, for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, so we've got a few second level spells in the group. Mm-hmm. Glad I like that. That's good. It gives you a few more resources, so I can put some interesting stuff in there. 
Um, so, here's a question. Um, are you guys aligned with the guild yet? Technically, you're Planeswalkers. You are from... Amonkhet. Zendik oh, Amonkhet, right, because yeah. you're playing a Naga. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're from... Innistrad. Innistrad, and you are from which planes? Where was I from? Well, uh, you... Burfolk are everywhere. You, you <laughs> like... Anywhere. You want to be a spooky mermaid, or...? Uh, not Innistrad. I think this is the one you were looking at. You were looking at Ixalan. But... Even yeah. there's yeah, like merfolk at, in like Dominaria or Ravnica or sure. I think so the strongest ones probably were in Ixalan. Maybe I'll do Ixalan. Okay. I was reading the little introduction, so I like that aesthetic. Okay, so none of you are from Ravnica. You are all now on Ravnica because you can planeswalk now. It's something mm -hmm. you can just do. Okay. Um, are any of you associated with the guild yet, or are you not not affiliated at this point in time? I'm gonna say non-affiliated for me at this point in time. I, okay. I kind of want to fill it out, and see see how it works. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. I haven't played the gruel for a while. I, mean, I have two guilds that've been been whining and dining me, but I don't know if I want to commit yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> awesome. So when you hit third level, you'll mm -hmm. gain a, an official contact in the guild that will be able. They'll give you an extra spell mm -hmm. when you hit that level, but they'll also you know be able to kind of vouch for you with guild activity and stuff like that. Um, and possibly you can join the guild at that point. <laughs> What's in Lorwyn? No. Uh, that's a good question. What's uh, What about Lorwyn? Is Sorry. that... That's Lorwyn's, not a name I am familiar with. It's oh. another plane. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a, like a fey... Mm -hmm. Lorwyn? One of them was like light and one was dark. I can't remember the name yeah. of the two of them. Even, even oh, you mean the Feywild and the yeah. Shadowfell. Sorry, that's 4th yes. edition D&D. Yes, that. that would actually represent it very well. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe that's where the Merfolk are from. Maybe. I don't know. But I think Ixalan, I think, also has Merfolk. Merfolk. Yeah, they definitely do. That's, yeah, Merfolk are from Lower Range. Oh, yeah. Uh, Thank you. Gumby Moto. Yeah. It says Merfolk are in Lower Range, so good to know. Uh, sadly, there is not a plane shift document, uh, a PDF released by Wizards of the Coast, for Lorwyn, so I know nothing about it. I'll have to Google that. Thanks for giving me homework. <laughs> Way um, to go, buddy. <laughs> seriously. But, okay. So, not affiliated with guilds, that's kind of a good thing. Just because some of the guilds are just diametrically opposed, and if one of you had been like, oh, I'm definitely going to be... You know, Azorius, and one of them was like, "Oh, I'm definitely gonna be Rakdos." Like, it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to mash those two things together. Right. I can make it work, but it always requires a little bit of hand waving. So um, that's cool. Let's talk alignment. Okay. So there's this. It's the standard D and D kind of alignment spectrum, mm -hmm. starting with lawful good, chaotic good, neutral good, lawful neutral, neutral, and then all the evil stuff. Oh, wait. Lawful good, chaotic... Yeah. So. I am not, in theory, opposed to evil PCs. Mm -hmm. However, it is the kind of thing where if you are going to play an evil PC, we need to really have a discussion as to what your motivations are, why you're hanging out with these people who might not be evil, and why you're not going to betray or kill these people. Because that doesn't... You might... People think it makes for good drama, and it does for about... 10 minutes, <laughs> and then the game falls apart. Yeah. Every time I've ever seen it happen. So, um... Racial trait says neutral, neutral, evil. I'll just stick with regular neutral. Okay. So, so you can go either way as far as good or law goes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like neutral anyways. Same. Mine was neutral, and I like playing neutral. Yeah. So okay. Go with neutral. I didn't take note of that, so I will... I think not... shifters tend to be more on the chaotic side. Mm -hmm. Um... And I don't. I think they're neutral as far as like the good evil spectrum. Okay. Uh, so yeah, chaotic neutral. Chaotic has, neutral. Okay. That's cool. Is that one? Okay. So then, we've got a, a lot of morally flexible individuals. Mm -hmm. That's actually not a bad thing. Yeah. It's, it's always tough when you get like like one lawful good paladin in a group and <laughs> everybody else is like neutral, chaotic neutral, neutral evil or whatever, mm -hmm. and then like it's like why are you hanging around? You're just too stupid to realize they're evil. That's what this is. <laughs> so, uh, but since you're all neutral, that works out. It also kind of helps because now I can design some little like missions or like jobs that you can do for some of the other guilds that are you know not as goody two shoes, 
and you guys won't necessarily be like, absolutely not, we refuse to do that. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of trouble you get into as a result. And great mercy action says evil PCs are always good. <laughs> do you mean if... evil PCs always end up being good in that they always do good things even though their sheet says evil? Or do you mean good as in they're always good to have around? Um, I, would, I would probably disagree with the second assertion, but I would probably agree with the first one. But they do only work if the whole party is generally if that whole, alignment. Whole right. Party. Yeah. Or if every like if everybody has kind of agreed to be like, yes, I'm evil. For whatever reason, we have decided that we are friends and we work together, and I will not betray you guys. But you know, it may affect the way I interact with NPCs or the choices that I make. You know, things like that. That's okay too. Um, kind of classic example in my. Have any of you read the Dragonlance books? No, I'm not. I read a couple. Okay. You should read them, they're good. But um, there's one guy in the group, his name is Raceland Majir, and he's like the group wizard. Mm -hmm. And he's the brother to like this big burly fighter named Karamun, and Karamun is like the the quintessential like chaotic good fighter, like, I don't care what the law says, someone needs help, I'm gonna go help him, and you know, if the guards come after me, well, we'll just deal with that then. Mm -hmm. Raceland Majir is just straight up freaking evil. Like, he is self-motivated to the nines, he's ambitious, he doesn't care about killing innocent people to get what he wants, especially later on in the story. Um, but he hangs out with them because he's like, yeah, there are these people trying to conquer my homeland, and I'm not cool with that. Plus, if anybody's going to conquer it, it should be me. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Actually, often They're good wonder, for gameplay. I wonder if they're the inspiration for um, Urza and Mitra from Magic. Like the brothers' be. war thing, because it kind of there's a lot of similarities yeah. that happen between them. So. I can I can agree with that. Yeah, I haven't read through the Urza stuff in a long time, but from what I remember, yeah. Um, Great Mercy Action says that evil PCs are good for gameplay. Agree to disagree. Um, <laughs> again, we've all got our own experiences. I've never seen it work out well in any of my games. So, but all right, we've got neutral, chaotic neutral, so that's good. We got your spells. Um, I think there are a couple other little minor bookkeeping things, like some of your weapon proficiencies, but that's all kind of... That's all clerical stuff at that... Seems like now is a good time to probably cut the stream, <laughs> since my camera has decided once again that it's going to turn off. We have to figure out what that was, what that's about. Gummimoto, I agree. Raceland was one of the best um, PCs, starts out kind of good, and ends up evil storylines. It, it was really good. And then, of course, he's got his redemption arc in, like, the Time of the Twins um, story. Was that Chronicles, I think? Um, or is it Legends? I always get the two mixed up. Anyways, um, he's a cool character, for sure. Um, it's just a lot of PCs at my tables don't go that route. They just go, I'm going to be evil. Ha ha ha, I kill this guy and steal all their gold. Kill, 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 stab, like, stab, stab. All right, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but since our one camera has decided to cut out and the rest of it is kind of just minor bookkeeping stuff. It's not as interesting or exciting at this point. So we're going to call it for the day. Our next episode will be, I think, the last Sunday in February. Is that the plan? Kind of Sounds aiming for the last week. Sunday yeah. of mm -hmm. the month? Okay. okay. So last Sunday in February, we'll put up the official date and time and all that stuff um, sometime in the next few days. If you would like to know when that's going to happen, you can follow us on Facebook. We're ravensdale.publishing. Uh, we're in, on Instagram or Ravensdale.publishing, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, um, you can find us online, and that way you can check us out and look into our board game, Villains and Henchmen. Uh, Samson, um, the Naga, he is uh, the artist for the game. And Sophia and Andrew cosplayed for us at San Diego Comic Con last year, so you can find them through us, or I'm sure you can share your. And just all my handles are can hardly fly, all one word. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There you go. So give them a follow. Sophia does some awesome cosplay stuff. Um, Andrew's just a cool dude in general. So. Yeah. He's pretty all right. <laughs> pretty all right. Just all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Yep. We will see you next time. And if you're interested, midweek this week, I'm going to be going into an in-depth explanation of the Planeswalker class that I homebrewed for this campaign specifically. So I'll see you Wednesday night at 7 to talk about that. Thanks again, and have a good night. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everybody.